dog has the ball. Coming out of it. Will not get it back. <laughs> no, man, honestly last two days i'm pretty i'm pretty exhausted so i'm probably just gonna stay in um for the rest of the night uh i gotta get up not early tomorrow because it's a 140 game but um check out and then uh and then drive back afterwards so i don't want to get a run in in the morning too so Comments aren't showing up. They, they usually fix themselves after a minute. Can Purdue beat UConn? I mean, yeah, anything can happen. You know, I it's UConn has looked noticeably better the last two tournaments, really, than every other team. Um, but really, man, when you uh, the Tennessee game was. Close, I guess, but Purdue's had a great run here. They've had a really – how unlikable is – you know what's weird? I don't – I'm not saying that I'm, like, you know, rocking a foam finger and shit, but, like, I don't get the Purdue hate. Um, I, there Maybe there's a scandal or something that I'm missing, but the, the gist of the Purdue hate seems to be one two things. One – People find their fan base annoying on Twitter. So, get, what fan base other than Tigers uh, is is not insufferable on social media? What person isn't insufferable on social media? I think I'm a pretty nice guy. I'm insufferable on Twitter. Insufferable. Um, but the second big thing is that people just hate Zach Eady. Not so much as a person, but they just hate the way he plays and that he gets every call. Okay, there is truth to that. Zach Eady is incredibly tall. And Zach Eady gets a lot of calls and shoots a lot of free throws. But, like, is his – is the way he plays that much different than Hunter Dickinson or Andre Drummond when he was with the Pistons or uh, uh, Patrick Ewing when he was with Georgetown, like, or, or, or Elijah Wan? Yeah, he's a big, tall motherfucker who's, like, kind of unguardable because he's a big, tall motherfucker. I don't know. I don't – you know, they've paid their dues. Matt Painter's done a wonderful job there, and they they consistently came up short in in um um they consistently came up short in, in the postseason. And this now it's their turn. I think that you know, I don't it just doesn't bother me. Having a wonderful time. Having a wonderful time, man. I, I mean when I um it, guys, it really again I'm frustrated myself for not seeing this clearer when I was at Barstool, but really the second Another opportunity arises. I got to move down here. Like, I can't. It just doesn't make sense financially right now for me to do this for every game. But realistically, I should be at every Tiger game. Um, this is, uh, you know, it's where the content is the best. It's where I feel the best. I love going to Comerica. Love running into the people. I love watching the games. Um, so, I, I hopefully at some point in the future... Um, that can, and I, I think, and I'm proud of this and I give the Tigers organization a lot of credit for this as a fan who has been very critical of this team and will continue to be if they struggle. Um, my relationship is very good with them. You know, um, I, I've had players on my show. I've had the manager on my show. Um, would I go solo or find a room? I would probably go solo. Uh,
Thanks, bro. Uh, Austin is, is in the lab right now cooking up the uh, vlog for this uh, um, for this uh, this weekend. That sh I, I'm going to tentatively schedule that for Monday. We got a lot of footage, so he has a lot to work on. Um, But I mean, I just noticed um, there's just such a com greater confidence in my content, just anything associated with the Tigers versus anything else. Um, did I enjoy the Wings game? I'll be honest, man. I was really tired. I, I left in the second period. You know what's weird? I just, it was worth the money because I love going to LCA. Um, but, and I give, uh, hockey's a cool sport because it's very intense. And I just didn't, um, I just didn't, uh, I was too tired to like deal with that intensity, but I, and I watched a fair amount. I know what happened. Um, and it was still worth it to go to LCA. Um, I was tired yesterday though. Uh, we do have a guest for this week. Yep. I'm not going to announce it. We do. Am I following the Rico Dave basketball drama or just done with Barcelona? No, I'm not done with Barcelona. No, I, really my relationship in terms of how I consume Barstool is no different than what it was before I got hired there. Um, which is there's stuff on there that I find really funny and appealing and that I like and will continue to watch. And there's stuff that I just don't care for. I mean, I think one of the really unique things about Barstool is that there's so much content that you can, like, it always annoyed me when people would be like, I watched this show and I didn't like it. It's like, okay, there's, yes, there's going to be bad shows on the network. There's going to be personalities on the network you don't like, but in general, we put out a lot of stuff that I still really enjoy. Uh, you just got to find those outlets. So no, I mean, all I continue to follow the clips with mostly sports and, you know, I support anything Nick and KB are doing. I'm, this is, and time will heal this. I'm a little bit salty about some of the baseball stuff. Um, and I, I put the brunt of that on myself because I think that I'm, I think I'm a very good baseball voice that for some reason was not very good on that network. Um, but it is what it is. Um, besides that, no, I mean, I, I, I'll keep up with it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I've gotten this credit. First of all, people on Twitter noticed the most random shit. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, Well, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call it trash because there's talented people on there. I like Clemmer and, and Hubs and those guys. I mean, it's not – I don't think I, – I, I, that's too harsh to call it trash. I think um, – I'm frustrated that in the time in which Carl and I were recording the Barstool Baseball show, I was just like – I think if we kicked off that show now with the headspace I'm in, I'd feel completely different. But I just wasn't – and I'm, you know, it's, it's a pussy move to blame your mental health, but I just was not present all the time. I still, and I still think we did a lot of stuff that I'm proud of, you know, but, um, I feel like I could have done more. Well, look, I mean, I think, and I've told people to park this today. Um, I, uh, I think these first eight games for the Tigers in general, um, Are sorry, sorry. Uh, I think these first uh, eight games in general are um, a microcosm of the team that we're going to see. Hey, it's Jeff D. Lowe. Hey, Jeff. I was just texting him earlier today. Show him again. Okay. Um, but, well, which is, I think this pitching staff is going to keep them in games. This pitching staff is going to win games. And every other night, this offense is going to be. Fucking terrible. Um, and, and unless Torque or Green really come alive. And, and look, I'm going to – marathon, not a sprint, okay? So I will give them – I don't know how long I'll give them. But there's this – okay, there's this th this conspiracy out there, this theory that a lot of fans have 
that I don't like Spencer Torkelson or that I'm rooting for his downfall. Nothing could be further from the truth, okay? I judge, you know, it's that um, Urban Meyer quote, I treat my star players like star players and I treat my trash like trash. Um, the way I feel about those guys is like, I'm not going to sit here and give them little pats on the back, you know, every time they do something acceptable. We lost 114 games in 2019. And you could say this is too much pressure, but, you know, I don't give a shit. It's worked out just fine with Adley Rutschman. It's worked out fine with a lot of guys. We lost 114 games under the pretense that what was lying at the end of that shit rainbow was a generational first baseman, a guy who was going to hit 35 home runs and drive in 100 and have an OPS in the 900s. Um, and, and, guys, we are way, way too early. Green will be fine. Uh, I think Green is still, you know, he's still recovering. I think that – He's put together better at bats. He's got to work on getting lifting the ball more. I think he'll be okay. And he adds something because I think he'll be a pretty good defender in left, though he takes some weird routes to the balls every so often. With Torque, and also like that's a in left field, that's a different, that's a different animal. At first base, um if at the end of this year, Torque is still having an OPS in the 750 to 780 range, I would be in favor of signing Pete Alonzo. I it just, it, that's, you can, any schmuck at first base, that's a power position can give you those kind of production, you know? And I know you could say we're giving up on him early. It wouldn't really be giving up because you'd be getting a DH, you know, and Alonzo, you could DH him. But, um, you know, this whole season, again, you could say it's unfair, but not really. I mean, none of these guys in the Orioles have had any problem adjusting. Um, but this whole offense, is dependent on if those two guys come alive, really. Hot take, Braves miss playoffs. The pitching staff is legitimately concerning right now. Yeah. Can the Tigers finish above 500 with an offense like this? They can. A lot of things obviously need to go right. Thoughts on the race list? I'm not surprised. Um... I I had a feeling they would take a step back this year. They've just had so many injuries. It's the Rays annoy me because we grade the Tampa Bay Rays on a curve when I feel like we shouldn't. Um, if any other team had the playoff failures year in and year out the Tampa Bay Rays do, we would talk about them the way that we've talked about the Yankees over the last fourteen years, or the way that we've talked about the Dodgers, or the way that we've talked about the Braves outside of that run in twenty one. Like they fail. Every October. And yet we do the whole, oh, well, no, it's okay. They got farther than they should have. Like, all right. I mean, I do still think the AL East. Uh, NL West, though, has something to say about it. I think the NL West has some really good teams. I like Arizona. I like the Diamondbacks. Um, you know, we – so early. But we saw I, – I don't think last year's run for Arizona was – it was fluky, but I'm not going to call it a fluke. Um, I think there's a lot of talent there. And, you know, we have so many discussions about these pitching injuries and, you know, these guys blowing out their arms, and yet – at the front of that rotation, you have two guys in Kelly and Zach Allen that are going to give you 180 to 200 innings that are going to stay healthy. You have Brandon Fott, who was off to a good start this year and uh, was good in the postseason a year ago. And then you got Jordan Montgomery in there, and who knows what you get with Erod if he comes back. Um, there's some core pieces there that I think are going to be there for a minute. I have been called a lot worse. I will be there tomorrow, yeah. I'll be there. I'll probably be a little bit more low profile tomorrow. I'm going to be there with Anthony. Um, I'm just kind of taking it in. Because uh, the one I, – and I, I wouldn't take the stuff back at all. But, like, the one downside of some of these games is that you're making the rounds so much you don't have time to watch a ton of the game. Um, I, I'm not concerned about Maeda. And I think in general, I thought he was quite good after the first inning. Now you – you can't take the home run back. I understand that. But 
you know, Maeda is never going to overpower you. I thought he had some command issues. I think his last start impacted his uh, command issues today where I think that he was um, – where I think that he was afraid to leave pitches over the plate. Um, uh, and of course he was, but especially with that fastball. So you saw him missing a little bit um, and overthrowing a little bit, but I thought the splitter and the slider were better. Um, he'll be fine. How are the improvements like America? They're they're not su- outside of the scoreboard. They're not super noticeable, but they're good. I, I think Tony Paul tweeted about this. He's right. There's just a few things around the concourse that he just – it just needs like a clean sweeping, <laughs> you know, again, I, I still think it's a wonderful place to, to watch a game. I really do like Comerica quite a bit. Um, the one in it's the one thing about Comerica and I, I, I'm not somebody who's been to even a majority of the, um, major league, uh, parks, but the one thing about Comerica, the one criticism that I do think is legit is that it's lacking in like discernible features. Like it's a good place to watch a game, uh, good sight lines, people there are nice, you know, relatively convenient. Yesterday, the bathrooms were a motherfucker, but it was opening day. Most of the time it won't be. Um, but um, there's nothing, there's not like a distinct thing where you're like, oh, that's discernibly Comerica. Um, what do I think of all the new music being played nonstop at Comerica? I mean, I don't really think that's anything new. I don't. It's a bit generic. Um, it doesn't really bother me. Keith Sabies have impressed me, even though the results are mad. He's had a lot of loud outs. He's, you know, the thing is, guys, and I, it's, we amplify this stuff, but eight games, the best hitters in the world can have a shitty eight game stretch, right? Um, uh, I think. You pay attention to the at-bats. And from what I've seen, I think he's been one of the more impressive in terms of his approach. Um, But, you know, I think he's one of the few that I'm confident we'll see in Ascension at some point. The guy that I'm disappointed in so far, I'm not counting Hobby. We know how bad Hobby is. The guy I'm disappointed in so far is Parker Meadows. Um, Because, I I mean, I was really starting to believe in him. And I liked what we it, – it's not just spring. I like the little bit that we saw of him last year down the stretch. I mean, nothing that blew you away, but he was – you know, he was as effective as, as Riley Green was his, you know, rookie year. Right? I mean, he, he played fewer games. But, you know, he showed off speed, great defense in the outfield. Like, um, you know, they want him leading off against against righty. And um, he's given them very little. Great defender. He'll add value as a defender, but yeah, I, I it's so early, but I, I really hope he's not this year's Willie Castro, like a guy who had this great, great spring and got people to believe. And then it was just nothing. Now he's a much better friend, defender uh, than a Castro, but. Well, they improved the PA system, I know. Uh, It's been great. I mean, it's been great this week, you know, getting off of that great start. I would say that yesterday was as, like, just energized and as excited as I've seen um, the fans here in a long time. Uh, You know, Scooble pitching, improvements to the ballpark. Um, I'm going to be mad at myself when you – when I – Bring this up. What's what CP? What is that? Well, Joey Wentz last all year. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say yes. 
I think that so much of our criticism of him, and, I, and I'm not even blaming the fans for this, is based off of um, what he did last year. In general, through two outings, I know he had the inherited runner score, but in through uh, two outings, he's only given up one earned run. Um, oh, closer. I think, I think Shelby Miller and Jason Foley will get a majority of the high leverage, um, uh, situations. Um, I mean, I know he's blogging and doing Cubs stuff. Um, you know, I get tweets about him a lot, uh, you know, I wish I, I, you know, I hope he figures things out there. Like the thing is Carl, even people that don't like Carl and it's been like documented, the people that don't like Carl, he's a super talented guy and he knows a shit ton about baseball and having been around him probably as much as anybody at the company over the last year, like in his, you know, in his heart, he is a, he is a good guy. He's a thoughtful guy. Um, so, you know, I hope, I hope he figures things out. Um, I don't, people ask me about it and I wouldn't really even talk about it even if I knew. I don't know the um, uh, how do I put this the intricacies of uh, his relationship with the Chicago guys. I don't know if that's too far gone because that's the thing. So many again, I get asked about this stuff when most of the things that apparently um, went down between those guys happened well before I got hired. So I feel weird speaking on it because it was different versions of them and it was different versions of me. So yeah, I mean, it, it's the only thing that sucked about that is that it felt like I hated fucking hated all the tweets and DMS of people being like, Oh, you hitched your, you hitched a ride with Carl. Like you chose a side. No, I didn't like that's such a fucking nonsensical way to put it. I was friends with Carl. We did the baseball content together. I, I love Eddie and white Sox, Dave and chief. If I saw those guys or I had the opportunity to see him in public, I'd happily say hi to him. Like I, I have nothing bad to say about those guys. Uh, Carl was doing baseball content, so I wanted to do baseball content with him. Um, not everything at the Barstool is a big, huge feud and rivalry. Uh, do I think it would be worth considering have to play against righties at shortstop? You know, I've said it for a minute, man. If um, if Javi is going to keep doing his hobby shit, I do still. I I could see a scenario in which they cut the cord and just say fuck it, let Kreidler and McKinstry split time at short. And not neither one of those guys are everyday major league shortstops, but like if you have a guy who's below replacement level offensively. You know, what are we going to do? I mean, I always feel better when I'm here. Um, you know, it really is. And you, I'm so guilty of this, what I'm about to say. I am the guiltiest party of anybody. And I think in a lot of ways, I probably ended up derailing my, my time at Barstool because of it. But like, when I get out and you realize that social media is not indicative of what the world feels about, like it was, it was so tough. And I, you know, I'm not, I, I entered my, you know, my name into the fucking goblet of fire. Like I, I, I made myself a part of this with the blog I wrote and the people I pissed off. I get it. But like for a solid, I mean, it peaked with those days with following the Francis blog, but really for a solid several months, I thought based on the comments I was getting that literally everybody on the internet hated me that. Uh, Barstool hated me, that uh, Michigan fans hated me, that the only thing I kind of had was my Tigers outlet. Um, 
I, I didn't even feel good about like leaving the house. Um, and what you realize, and it's, it's tough when you're kind of struggle with some stuff is you, it's so important to just get out of that bubble, even temporarily. I think anybody who has run into me, whether it's been at the lions games, tiger games, you know, Michigan football games, like they know, um, they know the kind of person I am and I'm yet to, even in with all the stuff that went down, I'm yet to meet a single person in person who has been anything other than supportive about the stuff I put out and things I do. Um, so it's, I do feel better. Yeah. Against righties for now. Yes. But you know, TBD. Yeah. You know, Jack, I, I was talking to somebody about this at the park today. I really think baseball in so many ways has, has taken a lot of steps forward over the last several years. You fix the labor dispute shit. You get a new CBA, change the service time stuff. Um, you know, it's more player friendly. You get the new rules. The games are moving at a quicker pace. It's growing in popularity. But the thing that is the next big revolution will be how we figure out starting pitchers and keeping them healthy because there is no injury in sports that nowadays is as annoying and also as common as Tommy John surgery. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's sad really because there's no, the only injury I can think of is like, okay, if a guy tears up his knee in, in the, in football or any other sport, they're out for the year. Right. I get that. But when you're talking Tommy John, I mean, it's potentially 18 months, you know, and, and it just, it just kills you. So, um, I hope that there's a way that that could get figured out because I really, um, it's, it sucks to see so many great pitchers, um, struggle with this stuff. And, and, you know, even I go back and forth with it where you want guys with great velocity, you want guys with high spin rates, but in order, I feel like step one, in order to prevent pitchers getting injured is you need to completely change the philosophy regarding how we use these guys. Cause the lesson that is taught nowadays is maximum torque on every pitch, maximum velo, maximum spin. I don't care if it's the first inning. Like I wish, and I know this guy was a unicorn. I get it. I just wish every single pitcher ever would just model their mechanics and their just overall regimen and conditioning around Justin Verlander. Because Justin Verlander didn't get Tommy was through as hard as anybody harder than anybody didn't get Tommy John until 2019 came back and won a Cy Young. And, you know, maybe he's just the outlier. Maybe there's nothing we can do about it. But God, I, with the amount of injuries, I got to think there's something we can do about it. Is that going to be like that all season? Um, I don't know. Yeah, that is a bit weird. Yeah, man, I mean... Ohio State's always going to have talent there. You know. Did you know Caitlin Clark's games are outdrawing the World Series TV? Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, you know, I think another one of the things that is killing, not killing baseball, but really hurts baseball. You know, I don't care about the length of the season. I like the 162 game grind. I think one of the reasons that postseason ratings are down is that the postseason system is ridiculous. It's this 12 team, you it deems the entire regular season meaningless. And 
you're playing postseason games deep into November. And I love baseball more than anybody, but dude, that's football season. Um, you know, and they're never going to go back to the way things were. I get it. We'll probably end up having a 16 team playoff at some point. Um, well, I'll say this still mostly be about the Tigers. No, that's a very good question. Um, so basically, and, and it, I do explain, it, I think in the video I put up, um, I have a lot of thoughts on things. I have a lot of opinions on things. And the initial thing was, why don't I just start a podcast where I do all this shit? And yeah, that is something, right? But um, I think the best course of action is to do like editorial videos that I post uh, to social media and to YouTube of me uh, talking about the things that are I'm interested in. So you might get a 10 minute video all in. I'll just begin every video by saying, I'll say this. And it could be a 10 minute video on star Wars. It could be a 10 minute video about the MCU. It could be a 10 minute video about the tigers. Basically anything that's on my mind, anything that I would have in the past blogged about, um, is going to be something that I can just talk about. So I'm excited for that. Um, and that, I got to give Austin a huge shout out to that because him, that was his suggestion of making all say this and do an editorial YouTube series. And I think that's genius. Now, Chris and company will not be going away um, at all. In fact, I was one of the more cooler things about this weekend has been the number of people who've, who've asked me about that show. Um, and uh, I know what excites me is that Austin and I have the hardest part down right now, which is that we're making content. I'm proud of, you know, uh, the, the hard part is to, is to make something that's good. We've made stuff that's good. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about what the future has um, in store. I, I really, man, I'll see, I'll just see how I feel, man, in a few months. You know, I don't want to get too ahead of myself and maybe I'm just a manic. You guys know I have a tendency to be, but I really, I just feel better, dude. Like I was, and it's, you know, and, and, and I, I think I said on here, I'm done talking about Barstool. I'll never be done talking about it. It was a part of my life. I'm not going to run from it. It was a part of my life. And it's, it really, I just derailed fast. And I, I really hurt the company with my attitude and everything. And I do regret that a lot. But when we did split, um, I just, I immediately felt so much better. And that's not to say that I, I don't have a lot of love for the people there or that company or Dave, but, um, you know, I, I was open about it literally the first live stream I did after uh, I left Barstool. I stopped being a good representative for the company. Um, was there a time where I was? Yeah, yeah. And could there be a time in the future where I could be again? Maybe, uh, you know, a lot of fences have to get mended probably, but I'm not thinking about that right now. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, that's what was – and again, I'm grateful for my time at Barstool, but one of the frustrating things about Barstool is that, you know, my Tiger videos always, always play to my audience. They will, ne they never will not play to my audience. That's my bread and butter. That's my fastball. I love doing it. But if the Tigers aren't really good, which has been never since I've started making these videos, then um, it's not going to play to a national audience. It'll kill it with the local audience and with the baseball audience. But like, you know, those videos did really well for the people that follow me on Twitter, but it didn't do great from a national perspective with Barstool because, like, and I say this as the biggest Tiger fan in the world, who gives a shit? Like, it's not, it's not a particularly enticing team. They're not going out and, you know, winning playoff games. Now, I will lament what um, that content could have been at Barstool had – we have just gotten one good Tiger team, you know, but uh, it is what it is. Um, we, we, the, I, I really, I think at this point, I have enough creative freedom to play to my strengths. And you guys know my number one strength is, um, is, um, is Tiger stuff. Um, it just hits different. It's not to say I'm not proud of uh, the Michigan stuff or, or, you know, the lion stuff. I actually, um, um, I actually think we put out some really good stuff, especially with the Lions this year. But it's just to to the average fan on social media, Detroit fan, I will always be the Tigers guy. And I think there was probably a time in my life where I tried to run from that. And now, like, there's 
nothing else I'd rather be. Like, what a cool thing that people are like, I just associate you with Tigers fandom. I mean, I'm not as popular as this, but I think there is in the locally people associate my fandom with the Tigers the same way that people for the Mets associate Frank with that team. Like, uh, and I think that's awesome. Um, and I think it's authentic and I think it's something that can grow. You know, you see, um, there's this commercial right now that Shaq is on, um, and I love Shaq, but you guys see that video with Shaq talking to Jason Kelsey about retirement, and he's like, "Hey man, love your family. Don't do what I did. I fucked up my life. I lost my wife. I lost everything." It's like Jesus, Shaq. Like I, I like you better when you're doing insurance commercials. Um, you know how I am, yeah. You seen the Family Guy <laughs> where they make fun of Shaq? I think he's at an IHOP or something, and he's like, <laughs> "He's like, my flap tracks was supposed to have a Superman S on them." He goes, "Are you are you upset? Are you are you sad?" He goes, "Yes, I'm very upset." When will I throw out the first pick? I would absolutely do it if they asked. Um, I'd prefer to be in the broadcast booth, but yeah, uh, not against the possibility of. Uh, of uh, that, I love the Michael K show. Yeah, I mean, I we live in a content world, meaning there's so much that's consumable. Um, where and everyone kind of has their different lanes for different content creators. Um, I, I guess I was just thinking this today when the Tigers are good, it's not. Difficult, but I am less likely to consistently follow other teams. Whereas when they're bad, I'm like bouncing back and forth between games. And it's not um, a knock or anything like that, but it's just something I was thinking about. Uh, how did I get on TP last year? They just came up. They just approached me. We were getting killed by the Blue Jays, I remember. Aside from our TV booth, who's your top TV booth? They had kind of a rough week. But I really love the Mets brought booth with Gary Cohen and, and uh, Keith Hernandez, Ron Darling. The Giants booth has always been iconic. Um, I, I Joe Davis with the Dodgers is fantastic. Um, I yeah, I know a lot of people like the Padres. I think they're okay. Um, you know, it really. I know awful announcing does their rankings every few years. At worst, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how high we'll shoot up, really. But, like, the Netty is so popular that I could see us going from a bottom five booth to a top ten booth. Maybe not top five because we haven't done it long enough. But, like, the it, – it's like Benetti's like a great basketball player where he's not just great on his own, but he's making everyone around him better. Like, Simo and Gibby are just better when he's around. So, uh, I think the entire booth has taken a – um. Uh, a step forward and I think it's really exciting and I I'm not gonna say I called this but like I totally called this I, I think Benetti was brought in at the perfect time one it's just a good hire because he's a good broadcaster two um it's he's taking over at a time in which hopefully the Tigers are ascending a bit that was the one thing I said about Shep that like I did have to give – I had some sympathy about – is that he just never covered a good Tiger team. Um, and then uh, third one is people were so bothered by the previous booth um, uh, that like any replacement I think people were just happy with. Um, I see a lot of people talking bad about CML. Maybe it's nostalgia, but I think he's great. You know, the thing is, with a color commentator for a local baseball team, I don't need, like, I don't need you to be perfect. Bring me some personality, have pretty good chemistry with the play-by-play -play guy, you know, know the organization, Simo does. And, you know, to his credit, he's improved a lot, too. Like, I remember when he was first brought in, like, 10 years ago, 
He was just okay, maybe even bad at points. He's way better now. Um, I would have met Shepard even have a job. Well, okay, here's the thing. I, I did feel bad for Shep in the sense that Shep's had a lot of success as a broadcaster, and he is a talented broadcaster that a lot of people like and a lot of people have spoken highly of. With what happened with the Tigers stuff is, and this is from what I've gathered, I think a lot of it's kind of become public knowledge. For a long time, Rod and Mario did not like each other and they did not get along. Um, I don't know to what extent. I, I don't think they were fighting every day, but I, I don't believe that they were guys that were – I'll just be generous and say that they were not friends off the air. And I think that Bally Sports, or at the time Fox Sports Detroit, spent a lot of time babysitting them to a certain extent and making sure that they didn't have a falling out. And then when they did have a falling out um, – they defaulted to bringing in a guy that they knew would not rock the boat that they knew would not, you know, not fight <laughs> uh, color commentators. Uh, that was a safe bet. Uh, and that's what Shep was. Um, whether you liked him or not, he was safe. And I think when Scott Harris got here on, we were so far removed from um, that era that he's like, I, I don't care what happened before. Just bring in somebody else. For sure. No, it wasn't. Honestly, it was like the end of last year. Where I'm just like, yeah, I just don't think this is working. <laughs> oh. I just had a, I just mukbanged a five guys. It was one of the best meals I've ever eaten. I eat like shit when I'm on the road, but. God, shit tastes so good. <laughs> yeah, we had to get something going, man. Yeah, I know. That's why even it wasn't until, like, I had a long leash with Shep because of that. It's like, you know, fucking Kristen Stewart's been clean up. Like, I don't know. It's, it's great. Um, you know, it feels good to have that, that you know, swagger. And, and I, I just love being around Tiger fans and, and everyone's so supportive, man. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it sounds weird to say it, but I really wish like some of the people in my life personally were more, were as supportive as Tiger fans are. Cause I think that, you know, I'm not going to self self analyze too much, but I think one of the reasons for my alleged woe is me and my very, um, uh, you know, low self-esteem is that I always haven't had people that talk me up. Um, you, you know, you, you run into people, you feel good. Um, you feel good. You feel happier. Um, I think Chris Fetter will be here as long as AJ Hinch is here. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and I, to my credit, I kind of nailed that where when I was at Barstool, there was this section of my audience that was Detroit people, Tigers people, Michigan people, high approval rating. They were all very supportive, you know, like rarely ever felt any blowback or pushback. And then there's the Barstool audience, which just things went sour pretty quickly. And I, I'll take the brunt of that, whether it was lack of good content or just my general attitude, but, um, yeah, no, it got, it got ugly.
Um, you know, as happy as I am with the product right now, we're so early in the game. You know, I mean, what was – think of any great podcast or radio show out there. You know, they didn't know what they were 14 episodes in. My hope um, is that it can become a place where we can learn a lot about people, mainly Detroit-based personalities. Now, I'm not locking myself down to that long term. I, I want to have people on that I find interesting. Um, you know, there's a lot of interview shows out there. I understand that. I think my advantage is I think I'm a good interviewer. So I, I think we'll be good. Um, so we'll see. Well, you know, Spirit, I think for the longest time I did. Um, and I really think that it wasn't, it wasn't even the rehab stuff, you know, that I felt so much support and love and kindness when I went to, um, when I went to get help, especially from Barstool. And I'll always be grateful for that. Like so many people, even people that I hadn't even talked to at the company were just so great and supportive and kind. And I felt going in, I'm like, I'm making the right decision. I'm going to come back and I'm going to be, when I get out, like they're going to be receptive and they're going to be happy to see me and I'm going to hit the ground running with content. I'm going to move to Chicago. And like, I got out and I immediately felt the backlash and nobody specifically said it, but I think that there was a large contingency of people who lost respect for me because they felt like this was some stunt or this was some like forced thing or I didn't take it seriously. I never put two and two together like that. I just thought, cause I never been a fucking rehab for, um, but even then, I don't think that's what ruined it. What ruined it is that uh, I got the news about Chicago, and then for a year, my attitude was shit. I just I I pouted and I, um, and I I just did. Uh, now, in by the time the Lions playoff stuff rolled around, the Michigan football championship rolled on, we did put together some good content, but, but by then it was too little, too late. Um, uh, I just couldn't at, at that point. So. Um, you know, I take the brunt of a lot of that. I, I still think I could have made it work. There was, uh, I don't think I gave up cause I blogged a lot. Um, but it, uh, I, I kind of just, I couldn't handle certain things. I couldn't handle the backlash. So, um, I mean, I, I want to remain in the content game. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't really feel like, and I know there were people who's like, he needs to get another job. I, there's nothing else in the world that I feel like I'm particularly well suited or well versed in. I, you know, I, I, I'm I'm not gonna say I failed. Like, what a failure's perspective. Who gives a shit? But it's like, in general, the one thing that I have been successful at in my life has been creating the content and doing the videos and connecting with an audience. I'm incredibly proud of uh, the way that this stuff has, has grown um, pre barstool and, and, and during barstool and post barstool. Um, so um, I, uh, I don't, I think that I would just get antsy and wouldn't feel good if I did something else. Um, Do I have burner accounts? Um, on Twitter, I have one. Uh, this is true. I, I, like I, said, I don't have any fucking issue pointing this stuff out. On Twitter, I have one burner. 
I have never tweeted from it. I have never liked any tweets, I don't think, from it. Um, I use it specifically to look at certain accounts that have blocked me. Now, most of them, I don't care. If you want to block me, block me, whatever. But there are certain ones, I'm not going to put them on blast here, who might be like journalists or people whose information I should be privy to that I will seek out because um, they they block my original account. But I don't, dude, I don't have the time to like be setting up a fucking fake burner and shit. Um, I mean, yeah, I, you know, there's, man, again, the last year, there's so many things I wish I could, where I look back and I'm like, dude, what the fuck were you doing? Um, you know, the, the lights, camera, barstool stuff was, that was, I wasn't very good on that show. I never felt very good on that show. But genuinely, like, I, I gave Jeff a hard time about a lot of things. He was more patient with me than probably anybody at the company ever was. Um, I, I, I'm not going to say I treated him poorly, but I just did some weird shit. Um, and, and I was very unsure of myself. So, um, I, no, I like Jeff uh, a lot. Uh, and, and I think Jeff is very talented. Ultimately, my... I love the dozen so much and that's, you know, Jeff's creation. So, um, no, I got, uh, I, I got nothing but respect for the guy. I wish in the content that we created together. And I, I just think that this was an issue that I didn't think I didn't realize until it was way too late. Uh, which is I came into, um, I came into, barstool thinking what matters is me giving my opinion i'm not gonna back down from shit i don't care what other people think when in reality it's about vibes you know people just want likable personalities and i think i sacrificed potentially a likable personality for somebody who just wanted to be right all the time and nobody likes that um now with the tiger stuff, it didn't matter because with tiger stuff, I am right most of the time. I, I just I know that team. And when you guys see me when we win and I'm very excited, you see like, you know, uh you see that much more likable side of me come out. But um you know, I think the guys that really work here are, are the guys who are kind of able to roll with the punches and and uh I, I think if in a different universe I could have, but it just didn't work out this time. At the time I thought I thought that's what people wanted. Um you know, and, and and a little pessimism around the edges is not a bad thing, but you you hammer it into the ground. It becomes too much and uh you overdo it and you oversaturate. Um and it becomes it, it was I was talked about this a bunch. But um how do I put this? I um with lights camera bar stool and with a lot of the other things I did, I hated if I was a listener of those shows, I would have hated me on there. Cause like I just think it's fucking lame for somebody who is on a movie podcast to consistently shit on movies. You know, um, so that was just not the best version of me. So, you know, you learn from it. Um, no, I'll be honest. I think I probably made too big of a deal out of the movie theater blog. You know, nobody, I don't think anybody's opinion of me, uh, changed because of that. It was just kind of cunty, um, no, and I think when you're in a bitter place, you write bitter things, and that's what ended up pissing a lot of people off is that – and I get it. I totally, from their standpoint, totally understand it, which is that you have this guy who's kind of on this island at Michi in Michigan who's – we kind of have to walk it, you know, walk a tightrope around him. Like he's got some issues, and yet um, he's continually writing blogs, like taking shots at certain things. Um my only problem is I wish somebody would have told me before fucking Francis, you know, it was, um, but it's whatever.
It'll be a good book one day. Dude, I'm just tired. I, I That's why I came out here and talked to you guys. I, I And I got another game tomorrow, and I want to get up somewhat early and get a run in. So, like, I'm just kind of chilling and, and talking with you guys. Um, the thing is, and this this admittedly makes me look like a giant pussy, but, like, I have a bunch of anxiety, and I have a lot of social anxiety. Um, and the social interaction takes a lot out of me, so I get tired very quickly. Like, this is like I. I'm gonna do this one time, okay. Because this part of the journey, I'm done. Because it doesn't matter what I say to a certain extent. There's so much misinformation out there. I am shocked of all the things Francis wrote in that blog that that was the one thing that people ran with. Uh, I can back this up with evidence on top of evidence. There has never, at any point in my life, by anyone, has anyone considered. A restraining order against me or filed a restraining order against me i when i read that in the blog i just figured people would take that for what it was which was francis making a joke on a comedy website um so i'm um no i mean i don't know but the thing is though again it doesn't matter what i say i can it, it just people run with their narratives that's what happens people love the drama um because he was making a joke on a comedy website. That's what we do. You know, the same way, like, I don't think Kirk actually wants to blow up Jeff D. Lowe's house, but you say it because it's, it's good content. Uh, yeah, no, I've texted both of them a little bit. Um, I know it's weird. I, I, I really like KB a lot. I didn't get to know him as well as I would have liked to, even though um, I, he gave me a great interview. But um, definitely, uh, Nick and I will be in touch. And if I'm if I'm back in Chicago, I, I'll hit him up because um, a wonderful guy, yeah, a really supportive guy. And in a and he's so popular at Barstool um, that I feel like it would be very easy for somebody like him to sell out. Um, but he, you know, he was just, he was always nice to everybody, you know? Um, so yeah, no, I, I plan on keeping up with him. Yeah. Would I ever get another Barstool guy in Chris company? I would, but not for a while. Um, I, I think, you know, and I'm fine talking about it on here just cause like really it's these lives, you know, they're not doing gangbuster numbers anyway. And, and a lot of these, you know, streams get kind of personal. But in general, I think from a content standpoint, for the at least for the foreseeable future, next several months, it is um, it is uh, it's best that I separate myself from them, um, not in a way that I feel contempt, but I also think I don't want to make it seem like I'm leeching or hanging on. You know, um, they understandably moved on from me, which they should have, and I need to move on from them. So I, I, I would at some point um, potentially have another Barstool person on, but I want to give it some time. No, it's not Jason Beck. Um, I watch uh, I watch the clips. You know, in general, and it's, this wasn't even a barstool thing. I don't watch or listen to a lot of um, shows like front to back. You know, I, I I I'm you know like my generation. It's short form, a lot of clips. Um, you know what, Ron? I was thinking about this today. With the amount of pitching injuries that are going on in baseball, I bet he might.
I, the one thing I'll say about that, though, is I wish, and this will never happen, I wish collectively the fans would, like, um, come together, or not fans, but the owners and the teams would come together and decide, what do we want to do with this guy? Because either make him officially blackballed and just say it, or say that he's on the open market and can get signed. This whole, like, will he, won't he, like, I get, and I'm not mad at you for asking. I get asked about Trevor Bauer every night, and I don't know. Um Doesn't a Guardians Bauer reunion just make sense now? Um, now he was traded what in 18, 19? Um, 19. I don't I don't know how good his relationship is with them. Um, but you know, obviously with the Bieber injury, you feel like that it's gotta be in play. Uh, do I agree with the pitch clock being a reason for the injuries? No, I don't. No, I, this is luck. In general, I'm more pro player than I am pro owner when it comes to labor negotiation stuff. You know, I want the players to be compensated fairly because the thing is, these owners will be billionaires forever, and um, the players only have a finite amount of time to be in the league. At the same time, and I don't know if it's Tony Clark's fault, but the players' union presents themselves like such bitches. Like, a bunch of pitchers got injured and they blew out their arms in an age where guys are throwing 103 miles per hour in the first inning. Don't blame the pitch clock. Shut the fuck up. That, that like, it's, it's the same. It, it was the same thing that happened during the labor negotiations when they, in 2020, when they were trying to finalize the deal for the COVID year. Um, and the players were like, tell us when and where it's like, that's not it because you're turning down like pr these proposed plans. And uh, like, you got to fight for your thing, but don't present it like, oh, we're, you know, it's, it, it's mutual sides. That's business. You have to agree on things. You're going to have disagreements on things. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a believer in the Royals. Uh, I think that there's pieces, but there's not a core, and I think the bullpen's a big reason for that. Pretty good game here. You guys remember, I always bring this up, when we had the eclipse, I think, in 2017, and Trump just stared directly into it without glasses. <laughs> what a silly goose. It's a combination of things. Uh, there are people that just unfollow guys when they leave Barstool. And also, I think Elon's been purging a lot of bot accounts. Um, yeah, again, I don't. The best and worst thing about Trump becoming president is that he set the precedent that anybody can be in a role of power politically. With that will come some really great people who like maybe weren't politicians, but will do a great job of helping our country. And then there will also be people who don't know what they're doing. I don't, I didn't watch the Billy like Fox news interview. I don't know like how legitimate this is, but I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Yeah. But Reagan, he was an actor who became a politician. Trump had no experience in politics whatsoever.
okay, come on. That was a long fucking time ago. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the in the modern age. I don't know, the Five Guys burger that I just had was pretty fucking good. All right, a few more. God, Kevin Gossman got lit up, man. Favorite wing chain. Uh, wing stops moving up in the rankings. Wing stops been done good for me lately. Might be wing stop. Yes, I did know that. I haven't, you know, I've been so wrapped up in the Tigers. I haven't really paid a ton of attention to it. Um, <laughs> so, but I, I don't, that stuff's always weird to me. God, Mincy looks thin, man. Good for him. I gotta get back to being thin. It was cool. It's, it's always fun going to LCA. I mean, it, it really, I think that's an elite facility. Uh, admissions. It's a huge part of that. Huge, huge part of that. We've never... Um, like, we don't like text. <laughs> but we have... We've talked. We've interacted on social media. I, I always like Dougie. I gotta say, and, and I I usually wouldn't get in the mud with something like well, yes, I would. Um but last night, the end of the Iowa Yukon game. First of all, great game. Um that call at the end, okay. Kind of judgment thing. Is it a call that you would prefer to see made at the end of a game? Of course not. Like you, you, you'd want to see it play out, you know, so they could get a final shot off, and you know, it would down by one there. But uh, the big problem with social media is that every time that there is a questionable call, not even a bad call, just a questionable call, it's treated like the worst call ever. You can disagree with it. You can be upset that it was made. You, you, to act like the refs didn't have an argument or like that it completely ruined everything else. No, it didn't. It was the same thing with the Phillies um, Chiefs Super Bowl where it's like that was one of the most entertaining like front to back Super Bowls ever. And there were people that were acting like it was the fucking Rams Patriots just because of the, the second time because um there was a fucking you know, shitty call at the end. Who cares? It was a great fucking game. Um. 
and, and, and not even like an egregious call, a controversial call because of when it was called. Um, and yeah, to be honest, dude, selfishly, I wanted to see Iowa, um, uh, versus, uh, USC. All right, y'all. Just wanted to check in with you. Might be back tomorrow. I don't know. I might be tired when I get back from the Tiger game. But um, got some fun stuff. There will be an interview this week, most likely, um, unless they, they canceled the last minute. So, And we got uh, – I should have an announcement coming out, something I'm doing next weekend as well that you guys should be uh, interested in, uh, in uh, paying attention to. So a lot of good stuff around the corner. Talk to you soon. Enjoy the games. Go Tigers.